guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Doing Reacts. I'm back with a Mr. Nightmare video for you guys today. I'm honestly pretty excited for this one. Um, for my birthday, which was like 10 days ago now, 10, 11 days ago. Um, I turned 20, 24, I'm old now. Anyways, three horrific true restaurant horror stories. I went to the Mandarin, which is like an all-you-can-eat restaurant, or a buffet, whatever you want to call it, but basically a restaurant. So, I saw this, you know, it came out a few weeks ago, or a month ago, or whatever it is, September 28th, so, yeah, I've been over a month. Um, I want to watch this video. Because why not? Three true, three horrific, not even just three true scary stories, three horrific. And again, this is the this is the restaurant horror stories, and me and my friend are actually planning to go to a restaurant soon. Actually, I want to hit up my friend. I don't know if we'll be able to go to like a different restaurant tonight, because we can still go to, um, we can't go to the same one. I kind of want to go to the same one, though. I don't know. Yeah, I'll have to hit him up once he's done work, because he's done work at 8, 8, 8 o'clock. In the meantime, I guess, I guess we could always go somewhere else. Anyways, um, starting. Uh, like this video I like, because I already know I'm going to like it. And yeah, three horrific true restaurant horror stories. So again, I'm probably going to be thinking of all these stories when I go eat at restaurants now, which is not good, but I guess horror stories are also kind of like a, le a learning lesson. Someone else kind of learned, and now you have to learn from their mistakes sort of, sort of thing, right? Does that make sense? This video's theme is restaurant stories because of today's sponsor, Factor 75, which is a service that lets you sell nice. food cheap. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. The option plus the pro three goals. This when I was 25, I went on a solo trip to Rio de Janeiro. My favorite DJ would be there that weekend, and I always wanted to go anyway. I've traveled solo many times in my life and never had any issues. Airbnbs aren't expensive a little outside of the city, and the one I was staying at was very nice and comfortable. It was its own little one-floor house, but the hole inside was very modern and clean. The Friday that I landed, I unpacked at the Airbnb, grabbed dinner, and went to the rooftop venue That's where a beautiful the DJ would be performing. The first day and night all went well, and I met some really cool people at the rooftop, James, Ethan, and Jess. Ethan and Jess were dating. James, I guess, was third wheeling on the trip. The next day, I met up with them as they were also on a trip here. We got brunch together, then we checked out some of the sites together, like the Christ Redeemer and Is that back up low base? I know they are they friends. Own right. little one floor house. But the whole end of the Airbnb, grabbed dinner, and went to the rooftop venue where the DJ would be performing. The first day and night all went well, and I met some really cool people at the rooftop. Okay, Jane. so he just met them then. Okay, sorry, I wanted to clar clarify because I was like, wait, your friends like you just conveniently met with your friends? We okay. got brunch together, then we checked out some of the sites together, like the Christ Redeemer and Sugarloaf Mountain, and then we hit wow. the beaches. That's really high up. Fuck, that's they crazy. had tickets that they had already bought to another show that night, which I couldn't go to. So I was back to my solo ventures, which was fine. I still that's found things to these do. These are beautiful views, man. Eventually, when I was hungry, I walked back in the direction of the Airbnb, towards the outside of the city. On the way back, I stopped at a restaurant I found. I can speak a little Portuguese, but I'm by no means fluent. So I tried to keep to places where people seemed to speak English while I was alone. The menu on the window had some English writing, so I went inside. This restaurant was kind of small and dark. A lot of the restaurants in the area were expensive, but this one seemed affordable, so I stayed. The dining space was very long and narrow. It wasn't really busy. There were a few people sat further down at a couple tables. Then there was a man seated at a table basically next to mine. Okay. He was about 50. I wondered if he was another tourist. He and I were the only two people seated alone in here. That's the server creepy. came over and initially spoke in Portuguese. And I asked the Portuguese if he speaks English, and he said yes. From there on, I ordered in English. I noticed the man at the other table, looking over, watching as I ordered. It was kind of weird. When the server walked away after taking my order... The man said in English with a Portuguese accent that my Portuguese sounded good. I said thank you, and he started talking to me in Portuguese, as if giving me a lesson. I think he thought he was coming off as charming, but it was annoying and creepy. I kept looking down at my phone to act distracted, but he'd keep talking to me, both in English. I'm sorry, let me just make sure. Is this a girl or a guy? I think this is a girl, right? Um, is it 349? Kate, okay, so this is a girl, okay. I don't, I, I, I don't know why, but I was thinking that this was a guy the whole time, so I was like, maybe this guy's gay or something? Okay, no, it's a grown-up guy. But he'd keep talking to me, both in English and in Portuguese. 
I humor him to be nice and not create awkwardness, and I tried my best to converse with him in Portuguese, as he'd correct my mistakes while trying to speak. The conversation was basically where I'm from, why I'm here, what I did today, and where I'm staying. I kind of just made up that I'm staying with a friend. What Never tell him where you're going. was when he told me how sexy I am when I talk in Portuguese. I was hoping he was leaving soon, but a part of me died inside when I saw the waiter bring him his food. Luckily, my food didn't take long. I got some pork stew dish. The man asked how it was. I told him fine. He stopped talking as much now that he was eating, thank God. I ate quickly. When I was done, I hurriedly asked for the check just because I didn't want to converse with this man anymore. The man also asked for the check right after I did, which I found so annoying and strange. He wasn't even done eating. Once I paid, I got up and walked out. The man said something in Portuguese, but all I said was bye and kept walking. Bye. It was dark out now, and the streets were a little less lively. I was walking for a while when I came to an intersection. While waiting to cross, I noticed the man from the restaurant across the street. He was definitely looking at me, but looked away the opposite direction when I noticed him. Maybe he had to walk the same way. It wasn't that unlikely. I continued to walk back, and as I was getting closer... I kept turning back just to see if he was still in sight. He wasn't. I arrived to the Airbnb. I got to the front door and looked around one more time. I feel like, yeah, like I, I feel like getting, like walk, like, like walk around a little bit, kind of go home, but maybe past your house, or just because, like, you probably know you're being watched. I was like, make a few rounds if, if you think you're being followed. Maybe don't go home right away, or again, if you do go home right away, then obviously, like, watch your back. Especially if it's nighttime, bro, that's creepy as fuck, right? So, like, Watch and be careful because, again, you never know who's following you and, 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 and you never know where they're watching you from. And I noticed way down the block, that man standing on the corner by the intersection. He was staring in this direction. I felt my heart drop. He was following me. I let myself inside the house and locked the door. Then I closed all the blinds. Now he knew where I was staying. I panicked and called my dad and told him. He told me to just be alert, make sure everything is locked, and to maybe keep a knife by me. It was a Saturday night, and my flight wasn't until late the next day, so I did want to go out. Eventually, I called an Uber to a bar in the downtown area, and I went to a venue having a house music night. I was hey, why don't you hit up your three friends that you met, if, if, if you exchange numbers or phone numbers or Instagram? I was there for maybe a couple hours before calling an Uber back to the Airbnb. When I got back, I let myself into the house kind of drunk. I sat down on the couch just to relax for a bit, but I noticed something. I heard the sound of the outside, and then I saw the blinds to one of the windows blowing from the breeze. The window in the kitchen was open. I had all the windows shut because the air conditioning was running. I immediately knew to get up and leave the house quickly. I called the emergency number and did my best to articulate to the operator in Portuguese that there was a home break-in. The police showed up in a matter of minutes and I came out from behind the bush I was hiding and across the street when they did. One of the police officers did speak a little bit of English, so I was able to tell him that the window was opened and I was being followed earlier. The police entered the house and yelled things I didn't understand. The moment I saw them walking outside with the man from the restaurant in handcuffs was the most shocking moment of my life. The mix of emotions I felt, disbelief yet relief, but also horrified. If I hadn't called the cops, I had gone into the bedroom where he was probably hiding. I didn't even want to think about it. He was taken away, and I never had to see his ugly, creepy face again. I'm glad he was stupid enough to not close the window behind him. I should have listened to my dad and locked all the windows as well. I just never imagined he would actually climb through one, though. I left the next day, and haven't returned to Brazil since. Damn. Honestly, yeah, like, honestly, when it comes to, like, things like that, like, you always have to make sure that, that, that you're not being followed. If you are being followed, that's, like, the worst thing, especially if you're at home. Like, if you're being followed home, like, I've lived in this house for, like, what, 20 years now? 24 years, basically? Or maybe, like, before it was, like, an apartment. Anyways, I've, I've been here for, like, 10, 15, 20 years, right? So it's, like, it's, it's, been, it's been a while. So it's, like, if someone knows where you live, then, then it's, like, you literally have to, like, move your whole... Just because one creepy person knows where you live and I have to like move your whole life somewhere else, right? And it's just scary shit. It's like, bro, like I, fuck, like, and then it's like, oh my god. I don't know, they can obviously get someone else to come after you as well. 
like if someone goes to jail, then it's like they can always get someone else to come out. Like, you know what I mean? There's always just like shit that can happen. And that's why I don't like people knowing where I live. That's like the, 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 the last thing I want them to know is like, eh, no, you don't need to know where I live. Anytime I like, like meet up with someone from a dating app in public or, or, or I go to them, they don't come here. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. But yeah, please make sure I'm not being followed. And then, yeah, it's pretty crazy that the guy was really, like still there. He was hiding. Um, he didn't close the window behind him. Like, like talk about desperate. I thought I was desperate. And, and if you guys know me, I'm, I'm a little bit desperate. I probably shouldn't be admitting that, but I'm a little bit desperate. So this guy's the next level desperate. So. Alice. It was the holidays. Most of my friends were away, so I had decided to look for a part-time job to earn a bit of money. After waiting around for about a week, I finally got a call from a nearby restaurant asking me to come in for a trial. I had a fair bit of waitering experience, so I wasn't too surprised when the owner offered me the position. The place had a really creepy atmosphere to it. It was small, dimly lit, and every so often, a terrible smell would circulate through the air. It wasn't somewhere I would have usually gone for, but I needed the money and kept reminding myself that I'd only be here until college started back up. Anyway, it was around 10 p.m., and I was out the front by myself, cleaning the cutlery while I waited for the last table to leave. It was a table of four big guys. They were pretty rough-looking. In fact, if I passed them on the street, I would have assumed they were homeless. Half an hour passed, and they finally got up to leave. I smiled as one of them came to the register to pay. That's forty-two fifty altogether, I said. He immediately handed over a bunch of crinkled notes with a big grin on his face. Unfortunately, I had seen this kind of look before, and braced myself for the cheesy pickup line. He said to me, you doing anything tonight, cutie, bringing himself closer to the register. Thank you, have a good night, I replied, trying to make it clear that I was not interested. He laughed and walked out the door, mumbling something under his breath as he went. As soon as he was out of sight, I quickly cleared the dishes, cleaned down, and got changed out of my staff uniform. I waved goodbye to the last kitchen hand as I walked out the door and into the night. My house was only a couple of blocks away. Dang. This is going to be another story where you're going to follow it home, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So every night I walked to save gas. I had only walked for about five minutes when a loud whistle startled me. I looked off into the direction it came from, and froze in fear. It was the same guy from the restaurant. He was on the Fuck, opposite side of the street, signaling Fuck. for me to come over with a large grin on his face. Oh my god. I took a pause before my instincts kicked in, and I started to quickly walk away. My house was still about ten minutes away, and I could feel him getting closer with that. Do not go to your house. Get on the phone with the police right now and hide. Every step. Terrifying thoughts were racing around in my head, knowing very well that this could end badly. I turned the corner and started to sprint down the footpath. I felt tears gather up in my eyes as loud footsteps followed closely behind me. Fuck. I didn't look behind out of fear, when all of a sudden, a hand firmly grabbed my shoulder and yanked me backwards. Oh, fuck. I turned to see the man. His face was red, and his grin had morphed into a furious expression. He put his finger up to his lips. Don't scream or I'll cut you, he whispered. Fuck. At this point, I was ready to accept my fate, when, out of nowhere, I felt a sudden burst of rage explode inside of me. I grabbed his face and dug my nails deep into his eyes. The man let out a loud, horrible noise as he clenched his face in pain. I took this chance and made a run for it. I ran all the way back to my flat, and after struggling to put the key in the door, I managed to get inside. As soon as I shut the door, I collapsed down onto the ground out of exhaustion and started to cry. Close your doors, please. Lock them. all rushed down the stairs to see if I was okay. After walking me to a couch, I explained what happened. They were all shocked whilst at the same time happy to see that I escaped from the man. I rang up the restaurant and quit the next day. It was a shame, really. The owners were so kind, and I really didn't mind the place. But I was too terrified to return, knowing that that man could be waiting for me. I've started back at college now, and I'm slowly recovering from that incident. Sometimes I do get nightmares just thinking about what may have happened if I hadn't attacked that man like I did. Honestly, these stories are scary, bro. Like, I... Now it gets me nervous going to a restaurant. Like, I know that's probably typically happens to girls. Not that it can't happen to guys. It definitely can. But I feel like it's, it's a lot more common with girls. Like, I, I do feel bad for girls because a lot of the predators and kind of, like, creepy people are guys. 
I'm not saying they're all guys. They can be girls too, but I'm saying that like it, it typically does happen to girls. Like me being a guy, I wouldn't go into a restaurant and then be like worried about some guy being like, "Oh, you're hot." Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ha have that thought in, in my head at all. Like why would I, right? But if it's a girl, especially if like you know you're pretty, then it's like everyone's gonna be like, "Oh, you know what I mean." So gotta be careful. It's, it's, it's a scary world. Scary shit can happen. But I'm I'm really glad that she was able to attack him and get away. I was 19 and strapped for cash, so I temporarily took a second job working as a waitress at a diner. It was open till 3 a.m. on weeknights and 24 hours on the weekends. Great. And because she said wait, because he he said waitress, waiter waitress, because it says it's, because they said waitress, I'm assuming this is an, another girl. On the weekends, it was always a bunch of drunk kids at night that would come after they left the bars. During the week, most people that came late night were people working overnight shifts or just getting off from work. I would do the overnight shifts twice a week. Anything more than that, I probably would have passed out from a lack of sleep. I'd be the only server past 10 o'clock on the weekdays because there wasn't an abundance of customers, especially at the later hours of the night. One night, a larger man came in alone, around like 1 a.m. There was only one other customer in the restaurant at the time, I believe. I seated him. He started talking to me in a flirtatious way right away. It was always the older, unattractive ones that would be the most flirty. Always. I had to deal with it with a smile, though, as I basically was working on tips. Yeah, ordered true. a burger and a milkshake, and he told me his name, Trevor. Trevor would keep staring at me from across the diner as I would be sitting doing things on my phone. Low key, when I was at a restaurant too, I, I found a waiter queue and I, and I kept looking at them. <laughs> so I, I feel like obviously I didn't do anything besides that. Like obviously you just kind of like... Like, like, you hear this saying, like, you can look, but you can't touch. I feel like that's what a lot of people do. It's kind of like, well, you know what? I can't have you, so I'm just going to look at you. <laughs> I wasn't stalking them or anything. Obviously, if I, if I see them, I, I would just be like, oh, my God, he's cute, right? But that's basically the only thing. But that's what this made me think of. I was like, bro, this was, a, like, like literally me. I would just, like, um, anytime I see them, I'd be like, oh, my God, he's so cute. You know what I mean? That's probably the same thing. Obviously, this guy probably did it more crazy to be in a horror story. Unless he went home to his girlfriend and said, oh, yeah, I have a horror story for <laughs> He was the only customer left at this point now. He called me by my name over to the table. I went over with a smile, and he asked for the check. He left after paying, and when I went to collect the tip and clean the table, I noticed along with the $5 tip, he left his number and a winking face on the bill. Gross. I crumpled it up and threw it away. I thought that was the end of Trevor and I's story. Wasn't that... wouldn't that be... I mean, there's honestly nothing wrong with that. Like, again, he, uh, he was, like, what, 40, 50? I don't know what the age was, but she was, like, 19. It is, it is, it is always the older guys that do that. I'm 24, and, like, the waiter, I don't know. He, he was probably in, in, in his 20s, too. Even if I did leave, like, a cash money tip with, like, my number on it, I don't think that's that big of a deal. Because even, even she just said I crumpled it up. But didn't you say that you threw it out? I thought that along... I thought it said on the bill it said my number, and then... If if you throw that, then that's that's kind of messed up, because that's money that you're throwing out. But I'm assuming it was like it was like a sheet along with the bill. Anyways, but it wasn't. A few nights later, in came Trevor again, super late at night when no one else was in the place. I greeted him and sat him to a table. He actually hit me with a "How is my favorite server doing tonight?" which was odd considering I only served him one time. He again started some conversation with me. I was way too exhausted for this but I had to put a smile on my face and entertain it. I thought maybe this time he'd give a better tip if I acted interested, but that backfired mm. because he mistook my friendliness as interest and yep. invited me to come on his boat sometime. I asked what kind of boat it is to play along, and he showed me a picture of this tiny little thing that could barely fit two people based on the looks of it. I said, oh wow, my dad has a boat too. I should have said boyfriend looking back now, but I was trying to get a good tip out of him. He asked for my number, and I told him I'm not allowed to give customers my number. I could get fired. He actually believed this, but after he left, he once again left his number on the bill, this time with a note saying something along the lines of, I bet you were just shy last time. Don't be shy this time. You can text me. It'll be our little secret, followed by another winking face. Mm. He again only tipped $5. This guy was a creep who didn't even tip well. I hope to not see him again. But this wouldn't be a story if I didn't. He came in the next week on another night I was working. It had to be like 2 a.m. 
and it seemed like he'd always come in right as the place would become empty. Almost like he was sitting in the parking lot, waiting to come when I wouldn't be serving any tables. This time he came in, and the first thing he said was, You don't call all right? But he didn't say it with a smile. For you don't call all right? What? Play. First thing he said was, You don't call all right? You don't call her right? Huh? I'm, I'm, I'm confused. Like you don't call all right, maybe? He didn't say it with a smile. He said it with a serious face. I told him I'm really flattered, but I really can't text customers. He didn't say anything. He just walked out. I was relieved, honestly. I'd rather he just stop coming in. The next day, while at my other job, I got a text from one of the other waitresses asking if I knew who the fat, bald guy was. I said, yeah, he's so creepy. Why? She told me that he asked for my full name. I asked her if she gave it to him, and she said yes. What? Why? You don't do that. Okay. Here's the thing. I, I've said this before. Wait. I was honestly really upset, and this made me uncomfortable. Exactly. What the fuck? Why? The, story, the story's almost over. What the fuck, bro? Okay, no. Okay, maybe I should... I'll save that for the end. I'm sorry. She said that he claimed he just wanted the name of the really amazing waitress from last night. Later that day, I got a text. It was from Trevor. He said, hey, it's Trevor, your favorite customer. I know you said you can't give your number out, so I took it. Least favorite customer? Yeah. Upon myself to get it myself. Now you didn't break any rules, haha. I was at a loss for words. I blocked the number and hoped that would be the end of it. But later that week, after I got off from work, I found an envelope tucked under my windshield wiper. I grabbed it and got in my car. Its contents were disturbing. It was a bunch of pictures of me in the diner, taken from the parking lot. The pictures got more disturbing, though. When they started being of my apartment, and of me standing on my front deck or unlocking the front door. Most disturbing of all was a picture taken through the front window at night. I drove straight to the police precinct with the photos to report this. These pictures, accompanied with the text I received from him, was damning enough. I stayed at my parents' house that night, and the next day, a detective called that Trevor guy and told him if he continued to contact me, it would be considered harassment and he would be arrested. I still quit the job at the restaurant just to be safe. My lease was up the next month, and so I moved to a new apartment. Thank God. I didn't want to have any chance of that man finding me again. He was the first and only true stalker I've ever dealt with in my life. That's that that's terrifying. Okay, what I was gonna say before I get into the comments. So what I was gonna say is that when I went to my friend's workplace, she worked at McDonald's at the, at the time. I was like, oh, is his name here? And then she said, no, sorry. I knew he was there because me and him are friends or best friends. He told me he was there. I knew he was there. So the girl kind of like went around telling her other coworkers. And then I kind of like sat because I knew that he was there. I wasn't away from him anyways. Um, but I, get, I, I understand that they can't say, oh, yeah, he's here. Come, you know, come. Over. He's right here. You know, come talk to this guy. Right. So, no. So I, I, I waited. I, I, took, I took a seat and I waited. They didn't kick me out. Obviously, I didn't do anything wrong. So I just sat there and I waited. And then, me, like, meanwhile, like, looking over at the desk, looking over at the staff, just to see, like, see if I could see him. And then the girl kept looking over at me, the one that asked if I, if he's here. She kept looking at me, and then I was kind of like, you know, I'm, like, I'm on my phone, kind of, like, waiting, right? Mess like, like, messaging him, saying, you know, I'm here. I asked them if you're here. They said, you're not, you know, sort of thing. And that's the thing. It's like you, mm, you can't tell them. I fully understand that. Um, and then eventually he saw me, and then I waved at him or, or, or whatever. He told his coworkers that we actually are friends, and then everything was fine, uh, fine and dandy. But that, that's the thing. You don't tell them, Nate, like, okay, this is the thing. Okay, so what, what, one more thing before I get to the comments. I'm not trying to talk too much here. But basically, so I ask for names too. Not because I like them, not because I hit on them, not because, well, in, in the case with the restaurant where I went to, the Mandarin, and the cute waiter, I, I asked him his name, yes, because I wanted to know his name. Um, I forgot his name, but it's in my Google review, so I could find that. I put it in my other video. Terry. Terry's his name. So, in my Google review, I was like, you know, Terry kind of, like, rejected me, but it was still good regardless. I might, I might remove that, because that sounds a little bit creepy. <laughs> um, or I might edit it and just, and just like, remove that part, because that's a little bit creepy. But, um, basically, yeah. Um, like... 
you can ask for names, but, but here's the thing. I feel like if if I'm asking you for your name and, the, and then you give it to me, like, oh, like, what's your name? I want to make, like, a, like a, a Google review for you. Anybody could say that, but then mean it in a different way, like, mean it because they want to know your name. For me, I normally just ask because I, like, literally just genuinely want to make a, a review about how nice they are. Because when people are nice, I honestly want them to get rewarded. I watch German videos, and then again, like, they're going to see if it into a it comes back to you. If they're really nice, I want to ask them their names. I want to ask them their names, I want to see how good they are, or like, I, you know, I, I, I see how great they were, I want to, I tip them good, I, I, I left a good review, that's the end of it. I just want them to be nice, like, they're being nice, so of course I want to be nice back. What's this? Yeah, you know what I mean? So it's like, in that case, I guess the name giving is okay, but then if it's someone else asking someone else for a name, it's like, that's where you kind of say no. You ask the girl directly, or the guy directly, for their name. You don't ask, oh yeah, Damien, what's, uh, what's that guy's name over there? Like, no. Like, what if they don't want you to tell? Like, in this case, the girl obviously did not want them to tell, so it's like, what the fuck, bro? Anyways, that's my story about that. Again, if you ask someone if they're there, like, I'm like with the rest of my friend, they're obviously, obviously they're going to say no, because they kind of have to. Unless they obviously know that we're friends already, then yes, that's t t t totally okay. But if you don't know, then you're going to be ca cautious, and you don't want your other co co co-worker to get, like, jumped, right? So they probably thought I was, like, waiting for him to, like, beat him up or something, but it wasn't it. They were, like, we're just best friends. The waitress from the third story should be fired. You never go, you never give out information like that to customers. Only if you ask the waiter, the waitress or waiter directly, and then you give them your name willingly, that's okay, because you, you, you did that. I felt bad for all the victims here. Some people just don't take the hint to leave someone alone. The last story, yeah, honestly, when it comes to like dating apps and, and, and everything, I feel like I'm one of those desperate peeps. I kind of like keeps messaging, but at least that's the end of it. Like if you really don't want someone to message you anymore, like you block them and, and once I'm blocked, I get the hint. Like I'm not like, okay, I got blocked. Okay, now I really got to try to reach out to them through, the, through this person or through the, like, you know what I mean? Like you're blocked, you're blocked. That's, that, that's the end of it, right? Um, the last story, the employee giving the information was so wrong. Stupid, actually. Glad she went to the police. Facts. I'm a, I'm a mailman and and all driving route and when Mr. Nightmare posts, it literally makes my day. Okay, been following since 2016. Honestly, I think I've been following since 2016 or 2017 as well. Never ever give that information about your coworkers for exactly what happened in the story. Don't confirm that a person works there. Don't give up your schedules and don't give out information to them. If it's a job confirmation, that's for a manager to do, but not the random answering the phone. Anything else, just say that you can't give out with the information. Facts. Again, my friend, always oh, 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 there. Oh no, he's not here today. I work at a co coffee shop and dealing with stalkers is no joke. Please be safe and that everyone knows what's going on. Over seven years, his storytelling has, has remained clear and consistent. One of the best storytellers on YouTube. Honestly, he is, uh, um, Mr. Nightmare is, is a boss, bro. He's a boss. He's a boss ass bitch. <laughs> I once worked in a restaurant and it definitely had its creepy moments. You deal with strangers and thousands of people go in and out. You never know when you'll encounter a crazy person. Facts. I worked at a restaurant, at a coffee restaurant for about two and a half years, three years. Never had any horror stories like that. I've had like bad customer stories, like whether they're addicted to me, but nothing like 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 stalkerish. I remember one guy like fell asleep in the drive-through. We 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 actually probably should have called the cops on him because we had to like leave and go outside because he was like just like no cars were honking. I had I had him eat there, so I leave outside. It was it was like pitch black outside too. So there's like four cars lined up. There's one car that was like waiting in line, but then he never moved up with the other cars. So I was kind of like, what the fuck? So I go outside. I knock on his window and I'm like. And he's like, oh, yeah. And I was like, you're kind of in the drive-thru. You're going to pull up to the window or what the fuck you doing, bitch? And then he he drove off. So he was probably drunk or high. Probably should have called the police, police on him and probably should have gotten this plate. But whatever. We never did. So I never did, at least, I, I should say. So, yeah, the guy, I don't know what the fuck that guy was doing, but he just passed out in the dry, in, in, in the drive-thru. So, yeah, that's not good. Whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm sure he was fine. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed, wait, here's a story. Yeah, this one too. Coker of the woman being stopped by a customer should have been held responsible for giving out personal information. Exactly. But this one, this one seems long. So we had a crazy man who ate at a restaurant I worked at every other night. He always had a Kodak disposable camera with him. One night, the waitresses conspired to steal the camera and get the film developed to see what he was taking pictures of. So, when he went to the restaurant, one of us pocketed the camera. He came out to the table and looked over for the camera, then finally left. So, the waitress took the film to be developed, and lo and behold, the man had been taking pictures of the behinds of the female staff. 
Next time he tried to come in, we showed him the photos and said he was no longer welcome here. So either way, you basically did the wrong thing to you because you stole the camera. You stole someone's property. I understand that there was bad stuff on it, but you still stole their stuff. Like Kodak, assuming this wasn't the 2000s or early 2010s, we have smartphones for a reason. If you're gonna creep, at least be discreet about it, but at least, but at least because he was dumb enough to go all out, he was better caught than banned. Exactly. Anyways, yeah, I'm so sorry for the long video, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it, though. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to like this video, comment all your stories down uh, down below, all your thoughts on this video, and let me know if you guys have, have any sort of, like stories like this or any kind of perfect stories. I've had some fair share of stories. Not anything to this extent. God, knock on wood, but just like creepy encounters, for sure. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to subscribe to myself and Mr. Nightmare, and turn on post notifications as well. Thanks for tuning in to Max. I'll see you guys in the next one. Deuces. Peace.